Hey everybody, Seth V here from the Knife Center with David C. Anderson, who has slightly lost his voice. A little bit. So he'll be nursing his uh, cup of tea there as we make it through this Blade Show recap video. We've got a ton of uh, custom knives from Blade Show, and we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about Blade Show itself. So let's jump into it. Well, thank you, Seth, for leading this video. Um, cool thing about this is I haven't seen any of this stuff yet. Yeah, this is going to be a, a bit of a surprise first impressions for you. I mean, some of these maybe you saw at Blade Show. Um, I know you know a lot of these makers, but these particular knives, uh, a lot of them I'm seeing for the first time as well. Mm -hmm. Basically, I went up to the buyer's desk and grabbed random knives. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, Seth and I, we buy a couple things maybe for ourselves, but the stuff our customs buyers pick up, we don't see till later. So this is this is kind of discovering them with you guys as well. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe more than any video this year, this is going to have some of the rarest, some of the most expensive, the most exotic stuff we're going to see ever. And that's, that's where uh, Blade Show shines. You know, that's where the world meets to talk about these kind of knives. Um, these kind? Those kind of knives. Mm. These, as of today, as of this video posting, should be live on the site. Um, that's the Demco AD 20.5 with full Timascus handles. Um, and, a th and a 3V blade. And a 3V blade, mm. yeah. So this is as upgraded as they get at the moment. Um, coming in at a cool 1200 bucks. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, even at that price, as depending on when these go live this afternoon, they may mm -hmm. even already be sold out by the time this video posts. It's true. It's true. Um, obviously, that's a ton of money, but Timascus does not come cheap. Um, really, most of that cost is in the materials here. Uh, two big slabs of Timascus. Uh, I believe uh, maybe knife makers in the comments could correct me here, but I believe Timascus is also a bit more challenging to machine, uh, given that it is multiple different types of titanium that have sort of been squeezed and, and hmm. uh, much like pattern welded yep. Damascus, they've been... Might require a different process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's see. an exotic material uh, that gives you a unique you won't find anywhere else. It's just crazy colors, kind mm. of oil slick going on. Plus you got an AD 20.5. Yeah. Great bones to this design. Still a hardworking folder, even when it looks this crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, 3V blade steel, super tough. That shark lock, ambidextrous. Yeah, awesome. Oh, one little detail with these, uh, you may notice this has a slightly different pivot hardware from the regular uh, Grivery editions. Um, all, I believe, of the factory Demco titanium scales will have that pivot. So yes. just something a little extra yes. to notice. Something to keep in mind too, not that you would buy this one, with the intent to swap the scales. So oh, please don't, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you are picking up a titanium version and you have some other aftermarket scales or we're looking at picking some up, make sure the, uh, the ones you get are going to fit. Because right now they're all sized to fit the Grivery pivot, which is smaller. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine somebody getting those for a scale slot, swap. Somebody do it. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah, that's a... A full custom knife from Nick Swan, his model 94, I believe. Uh, it's a non-locking knife with a really stiff double detent. Ooh, very stiff. Yeah, so mm. if, if that kind of lock uh, makes you nervous, this might be a cool option because it really engages there. And even if it were to come loose, you've got the, <laughs> you can see how much pressure it takes. You've got the uh, tab there mm -hmm. under the thumb. Yeah. Kind of like a little a bit of extra. Yeah. Higo style. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I'm almost nervous to put my, my hand in the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you got bottle opener there as well. Yeah, officially a multi-tool. Indeed. I believe we picked up these with uh, several different colors here. Um, I mean, Nick Swan is a very inventive maker. Uh, it loves to play with mechanisms and proportions. I think... Um, Steel is AEBL, um, G10 scales on this one. Got a bunch of options on the website. I think we got jade, uh, some other colors. 
acid wash on this particular one. But yeah, this design is just, it's a double detent uh, slip joint, non-locker, in a way I've never quite seen it before. Almost got a Higunokami vibe with this bottle opener tang here. And then, yeah, in between the point where you kind of lock it open and the point where you lock it closed. It has a definitive stop, actually, yeah. Yeah, this part is pretty free flowing, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it just kicks right there. Bop. Yeah. It requires a decent bit of pressure for sure. Yeah. A braver man than I could probably even front flip this. I was thinking that, and I'm not that brave. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> Thomas, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Nick Swan. Um, What's the price on these? Nine ninety five. Okay. Uh, one of our custom buyers, Nick, no relation to Nick Swan, is a fan of Nick Swan. I think he picked up a, a full custom flipper from him at the show. Um, he's got a couple of designs with Kaiser, but Blade Show is where you're gonna see this stuff first. Um, I don't have any knowledge that this might be come a production knife, but you never know. You never know. And, you know, even the companies who make those production knives are at Blade Show, meeting makers, looking for new stuff. Um, yep, yep. It getting, is where you're likely to see something first. And getting their next collaboration set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a cool uh, non-locking knife, so maybe, maybe we'll see something uh, similar from Nick Swan in the future like this. And it's officially a multi-tool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, next up, that is the... Can we just appreciate the polar opposite nature of, <laughs> of these two knives? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hand it right to you. Sure. <laughs> so this right here is from Rich Made Knives. This is his custom large zombie killer flipper. Uh, coming in at $875. This has been uh, hand finished in in every inch. Uh, <laughs> For as large of a thing as it's not terribly thick, it's actually some, somewhat reasonable in that regard. Yeah, one of the more <laughs> uh, reasonable rich maids I've seen come through the knife center, honestly. <laughs> in terms of thickness, anyway. Which is really saying something about uh, rich made knives. Um, actually, I'm really glad this is on the table here because uh, I will relish the opportunity to um, talk about Rich Made Knives. I really find him interesting. I find his knives very interesting. Um, more, more than literally any other maker, Rich Made Knives get people talking. Um, <laughs> even the kind of non-knife uh, enthusiasts here at the Knife Center um, have a lot to say about Rich Made Knives every time they come through the door. It's, it's a bit of a... They're a conversation starter for sure. Absolutely. And, what a spectacle, truly. Like And they all, all they always feel super solid too. Like they're even though they're they're kind of leaning into this kind of aesthetic, they're not gimmicky, like in terms of their construction. Like they're built very well. No, no. Uh Rich really nails the the basics first, I would say. You know, the grinds are symmetrical, the edges are sharp, the the mechanics work great, you know, the knife's perfectly centered. I have to check from the back, it's so wide, but it is perfectly centered. You know, all that, that stuff has been checked. And then he's just gone crazy. Having fun with it. With it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could pinky flip that open. Ooh, I did it with another one. Because you did, you did that on Instagram once. I did. <laughs> don't, don't drop it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Not today. Right. Not on camera. <laughs> we'll Listen do, to that clank, though. We'll do it later in the padded room. Sure. <laughs> full the, titanium, I'm guessing. Full titanium, absolutely. The thing with these designs, they either make you smile or they make you mad. <laughs> like, people get upset about this. They really do. Um. <laughs> thing is, though, like, they obviously they look like what they look like, but they do make you smile. Yeah. They, they they genuinely do. These like bullet hits things are, are really cool. I'm trying to. I wonder how we did that. Like I'm not sure if they're just milled in or if there's something actually set in the handle. It almost looks like something was like press fit in there. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But every one cool. of these, well, every one of his knives kind of has a different experimental finish or mm -hmm. different kind of trick he's trying. Um, I, I almost, they are so much fun and he is clearly having so much fun. It is drop shut, but watch your fingers. <laughs> yeah. And his buyers are having a lot of fun too. You know, the people who buy and collect mm -hmm. these, mm -hmm. um, th there's nothing else like him out there. They will work. I don't know if I have the pockets for this, but <laughs> some people do for sure. The Jinko's wearers out there again. Yes, yes. <laughs> Vintage extra large pockets for um, this one for sure. Price on this one? Eight seventy five. Eight seventy five. And one of several yes. rich maids of various ilk. All unique. Um, so the ones you see on the website are the only ones in stock. And uh, once they're gone, they're gone. It's funny, the next one is we talked about polar opposite. Before, yeah. this next one's also kind of a polar opposite in style here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's worth noting that uh, Thomas set up the table today. So <laughs> Thomas picked the order. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No one to blame but me. Uh -huh. uh, so this is a Bill Rupel, obviously. Yes, yeah. Oh, this is gorgeous. Man, listen to that snap, too. Wow. So this is a custom Lanny's clip from, as you mentioned, Bill Rupel. Uh, $1,595 at the moment. Linen, uh, linen micarta? Mm-hmm. I believe it's a vintage linen micarta, which you can tell. It looks like it could be. Yeah, yeah. The vintage micartas kind of get a little more caramelly in color. You can also see on the base, the, the section touching the, um, the backspacer there, it's a little bit darker, that line, and that's where that material has aged with time. Micarta, as, as some of you may know, is not UV stable. So when you affix something like that to, you know, the, to the base, you still see some of that like old school uh, darkening going on. Hmm. Which is cool. pretty cool detail. Yeah, I mean the the price on this one is because Bill Rupel is a is a master. I don't know how old he is, but I've known his name uh, as a slip joint maker for as long as I've known about knives. Mm -hmm. um, the Lanny's clip is a particularly um, coveted pattern, I think. Partly because of the exaggeration of the lines here. It is quite thick and chunky, very hand filling. Geez, so comfortable. I love how clean the back is too. Just the, the finishing along the spine and all the way down the, uh, the handle is just so meticulous. It's so good. Yeah, and of course you've got impeccable action. Really good spring, just wants to snap into those three positions, open, half, and closed. Yeah, I mean, it's simple, done right. This is, I'll try to talk through my uh, my failing voice here at the moment, but this is the sort of thing that, you know, people will see the price tag on this and, and you know, get, get a little uh, quickening of the heart sort of thing, and me too, I cannot afford this knife, but, what this knife gives you is an experience that even on some of the best production slip joints out there, you just don't get. And that's not saying any of them are bad. There's tons of phenomenal, phenomenal affordable slip joints out there, but they're not going to give you the exact same experience you can get for this. Now it's up to you to decide whether that's worth the price or not, but such is, such is it with everything out there. Yeah. Um, but to say it doesn't do anything better than some of those other knives is just flatly false. I mean, it, it's just a phenomenal experience. Yeah. I wonder what he used for the shield there. It almost yeah, looks like a rich light. Because it's not reflective. Yeah, very, very black, deep black. Let's get, let's get in there. It almost looks like dark wood. No, perhaps. we say dark shield. I don't know. Bill. Bill. Yeah, Bill. If you're watching. Bill's not watching. <laughs> That is really cool, though. It, it almost looks like there's a little bit of grain in there, but it's it's hard to say. Yeah, very cool. This is like riveting. I know, the, and I the, know. I'm very sorry, people. The closer I get to this this micarta too, you can really see the depth of the color changes that have occurred. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Those flecks are something that you should, that I, I like seeing. You you often see it in some of the lighter linens out there, mm -hmm. um, and, and here they're especially uh, characterful. Char this is a knife with a ton of character, from the lines to the materials, just even to the fact that it's a slip joint. Um, 
I think you really have to, uh, uh, you have to relate to this character to really want to buy this. Knife. I'm just wanting to wipe all the fingerprints off right Go now. For it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, just beautiful. Just beautiful. Next up, a very modern ballast song from Prince Customs. This, uh, I think we have a fair number of these. That sound. Yeah. I um, remember these in different. Different. In, in different, yeah, yeah, yeah different mm -hmm. configurations, um, each one unique. This one in particular has a damascus steel blade. Uh, pricing is $1,095 <laughs> at the moment. Got nice blue titanium handles. Check out the the deep radius of that yeah. cut out there on the handles. Well, one of the things that stands out to me right away is you don't have a latch, but you do have like, color-coded handles. Yeah. <laughs> and in the studio lights, actually, as I was holding them in certain angles, they, they pop almost like a fiber optic. Mm -hmm. You can really see the, the red and the green. So especially if you've got good lighting as you're doing your flipping, you know, without, even without the latch, you've got that little small, but you do have that visual cue there. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I'm not even going to try flipping it right now. <laughs> oh, look at that compound grind here. That's a deep hollow. And then the flat out front. Yeah. I can't help but feel... I, I am not necessarily the knife guy that this knife is for, um, not being much of a balisong flipper. But I can't help but feel that this balisong was very, very carefully crafted for balance. The way that that hollow grind is so aggressive here and leaves more weight at the tip gives you that... Um, that, that pendulum, that kinetic, yeah, yeah. That, that pendulum where the weight is up is a little more towards the front, and so you can just swing it through in a more controlled way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm making sense exactly, but <laughs> well, even the the holes there also remove a little bit mm -hmm. at the at the backside too. The way that I uh, experience, I guess, a really high end balisong is it gives you confidence almost mm -hmm. to to do tricks faster or more smoothly, it just kind of seems to work with you. And, mm -hmm. and this is one of those that does that. I think it's a little shorter. Um, geez, no, 4.6 inch blade. I think it must just be a lightness to this. It feels a little lighter than mm -hmm. other similarly sized balisongs. And the milling on those handles is just awesome too. Yeah. <clears throat> Funny, um, most flippers these days do not want to latch, but it didn't used to be that way. Latch used to used to be a, a necessary feature. I don't know what changed. Hmm. I, I do like that kind of as a, as a yeah. should we say compromise? So you can still see the, the safe and the mm -hmm. bite handle? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at it, yeah. That, Actually, are these? If you hold it up, I'm holding it up to the light here so you can really see the color pop through. So it's just, it's not just a painted thing. That's actually like a little fiber optic. Yeah, it goes all the way, all through, the the way through the handle. Yeah, that really shines in the light. We'll have to, hopefully Thomas can get a good angle on that. That's cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So Prince Customs, um, we have lots of variants at the moment. I, I mean, it's a top tier ballast song. If you're looking for that, like, collector status um, flipper for your collection, check this out. Very cool. It's up there with the best for sure. All right, next up. Speaking of the best, <laughs> that is a custom Emerson Commander. Um, it's probably my favorite Emerson design. I actually used to carry a mini uh, Commander mm -hmm. for a number of years. It's such a such a bold knife. <laughs> <laughs> that very is brash, with very exaggerated recurve. The way the blade. Um, almost droops forward with the big belly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the uh, the titanium bolsters there are actually uh, dovetailed, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think, something that Emerson really only does on his customs. So is this, is this a hand ground by Emerson himself knife? Um, I believe so. The Emerson Spec War Knives branding um, is only on the hand ground blades, I believe. Um, in any case, this one is 
just under two grand. Um, the commander was the design that uh, introduced the wave to the world. Really? Yes. Of this course, was we all know it as Emerson. an Emerson thing. I didn't realize this was the model that kicked it off. Yeah, Emerson started out making uh, dress knives, almost art knives, mm -hmm. and then ballast songs. Um, then he had some tactical folders, very straightforward. And the, but the commander was the first with the wave. Uh, and apparently, Emerson tells the story much better. But finding out that it sort of auto deployed the knife was a bit of an accident. Um, just this was made for some sort of special forces unit. Um, they were hanging out, playing with their knives, and noticed if they pulled it from the pocket just right. <laughs> bow. So if it crack was open. if it wasn't designed for that initially, then what was the the purpose at the time? I wonder. It was supposed to be a, a blade stop. I see. For CQC combat. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Also, happy accident. A happy accident, definitely. It does have the added functionality of being a bottle opener, <laughs> which I have used on the Mini, so not not going to try it here, but I assume the geometry will still work. It's an expensive bottle opener. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feels super solid. And a hand-ground Emerson blade is, is getting rarer and rarer these days. Absolutely. Yeah. This look now, it, it's, a, it's a kind of a drab military look, but this really is the knife that, that started it. The green micarta, the sandblasted. Uh, scales, yeah, an icon, really yeah, an icon. For sure. Mm -hmm. Next up on the table, the first fixed blade, first and only fixed blade at the moment. This is from Ramon Chavez. This is his repercussion. A Chavez, you say? Yeah, a, a custom Chavez too. Mm -hmm. What a beast. <laughs> That's a thick blade. What are we dealing with? Kind of a... That's got to be close to a quarter inch. Yeah, we don't have specs on this yet, but I can say that it's CPM 3V steel. So mm -hmm. that plus the thickness, I mean, this is practically bulletproof. It feels pretty good. Scales are flat, but it doesn't pinch you. Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't pinch me, at least, in any case. Plenty of handle real estate, even for uh, the uh, the big bear pod folk mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. yeah, nice generous choil. I think even with gloves, you'd be comfortable using that choil. I would agree with that. Yeah, man, outdoor tactical crossover survival knife type of thing. Yeah, a peak beater, perhaps. <laughs> Impressive sheath with this, or. Yeah, the sheath, I think it's a kind of a nylon affair with the drop. Very tactical. Classic. Made in the USA. Nylon sheath. USA is a nice touch. A lot of the, the sheaths like that to keep costs down come from somewhere else. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> this design screams Chavez. The squared off handle, you know, those angles there, those, those The big cuts. choil. Mm-hmm. I'm missing the skull though. There's no big skull here right, on no, this one. No clip. <laughs> yeah, like it, it didn't, the more I look at it, the more Chavez I see in yeah. this, quite honestly. It, I, I didn't realize it was him, but the from the angles of the belly on the blade even, like it, knowing his other models, there's a definite family lineage there. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of little things are, are adding up now, so to speak. <laughs> uh-huh. Really impressive. And we don't have this on the site yet, right? At least when we're filming this. So we don't have final pricing yeah, on yeah. this. Bear with us on the rest of this stuff. They're, they're actually being added to the site as we speak. So That's the, uh, the, the upside and downside of why we don't often sh show videos on the custom stuff we get is because it'll be, you know, the, the timing is sometimes a little off. And then any of these things could sell at any minute. And then we won't have anything to link to in the, in the description down below. Um, so definitely uh, bear with us on the rest. Keep that in mind if you're, uh, when you're looking for some of these things. Because uh, some of these things, I think, once they're up, are going to go pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Next up, from Heretic, this knife won the Blade Show Manufacturing Quality Award, in fact. This exact knife? Yeah, this exact oh, knife. This, this, this was the, the actual example they submitted for, for judgment. I think so, yeah. yeah. The Damasteel 
heretic wraith. It's a mother of pearl. Yeah, it looks like mother of pearl yeah. inlays in the spine, on the uh, inside of the handle. Well, the cool thing about this is it's an integral. Yeah, I was kind of trying to piece together exactly how <laughs> it's constructed. It, it looks like the only metal other than the blade is right around the pivot there. Yeah, we've got that front bolster, which looks like damasteel, just like the blade. We've got that swirled carbon fiber integral and the ability to put that big backspacer inlay there. Yeah, that is the result. real kind of manufacturing flex, if you ask me. Yeah. Big piece of mother of pearl in the spine of a handle. Wow. Plus it's still just, this has always been a very useful design to me. Like auto aside, whether that's your thing or not, it's got good action, but it's got a great usable shape overall too. Yeah. yeah there's some style to that clip point, but that's all business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Handle shape, nice and simple. I'm, I'm glad to see them win the Manufacturing Quality Award. I mean, it, this knife really did deserve it. Mm -hmm. Totally seamless. Uh, great use of materials. You know, uh, it's cool to see carbon fiber getting used like structurally as actual, not just as scales, but as an actual mm -hmm. handle material because it really is it's was strong designed enough, for that. And it keeps the weight down. This is not a heavy knife at all, actually. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Yeah. Nice, confident action. Not the fastest, but we got a lot of mass moving there. <laughs> Definitely thwacks your wrist bones just a bit. Just a bit. Very nice. As it should. Speaking of autos, this is... You wouldn't expect this to be an auto, probably. <laughs> I love these knives. The Switch Army Knife. So closed. This one is getting a little away from the classic Victorinox look with the polka dots, but pretty sweet. Chuck Gadreidis, if you're, if you're wondering. Thank you for saying his name, actually. I wasn't sure how to say Gadreidis. Ah, there we go. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck Gadreidis, Switch Army Knife. We've got the scale release. I hope, I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you push the scale over and that releases the automatic action. Yeah. Let me do it one more time. So the scale goes that way. And the blade pops open. Very cool. And it still has, I believe, yes. The toothpick and tweezers Toothpick as well. and tweezers, yeah. And th those are official Victorinox parts there. The rest of the knife is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost miss them with all the other dots mm -hmm, there in the end mm -hmm. of the handle. I mean, we're both smiling. Like, this this knife is awesome. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Favorite autos lately, for sure. Um, the Swiss Army knife is so perfect for it because, you know, you skip all the one-handed opening methods that came in between uh, <laughs> slip joint and automatic and just... <laughs> Get right to the blade. And I think he's using RWL 34 on these, or at least maybe some previous batches were that. Um, but you've, you, you're definitely going to be getting a premium steel in any case on these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're so cool. Yeah, I wonder how many of these we got. Um, this one with the polka dots is pretty sweet. <laughs> this, is, this is a smile inducer for sure. Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is right up there with the kind of thing that Seth and I personally would geek out on. Mm -hmm. This one's got a little bit more drop to the blade. I think previous ones we had a uh, clip point shape. Oh yeah. It's even... It's a little, other than the clip to it, it's, it's actually kind of faithful to the original Victorinox. A little bit, you mean the wedge? Other than this wedge, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got the slightly bulbous kind of... Mm -hmm. Tip point. a little lower than center line. There's almost a hint of recurve going on. It's like borderline. Yeah, yeah. Or even just maybe a little negative blade angle. So cool. Real quick before we move on. Blade steel on this. CPM 154. Black G10 with uh, G10 dots. We also have these in micarta. So there we go. Just that's as much as we know at this moment. That was pretty close though. Mm -hmm. RWL 34 is essentially CPM 154. Could you tell just from touching it, you think? And let me taste it. <laughs> Carbon steels have a taste. Yes, as we've discussed on this channel before. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on, American <laughs> Blade Works. Let's not get weird. <laughs> this is the Model 1. Uh, as far as I know, this is his only model. This was a maker uh, new to us. 
someone actually I just happened to walk by at the show whose knives kind of caught my eye. Um, at some point we looped back and picked up some of them. Simple design. I mean, you know, kind of speaks for itself. Very utilitarian. Nice ne proportion. Neutral handle. Versatile mm -hmm. blade. Mm -hmm. Yep. But American made and at a pretty good price. Um, I wish I could say exactly the price, but I think we're hovering around 300 which is pretty sweet for, again, American manufacturing, 20 CV blade steel, all out of one small shop. Um, Several colors, I'm assuming, at this point. Lots of different material options for the handles. Uh, that's G10. There's also micarta. They come in a frame lock version as well. I, I thought that was the case. I was going to ask you. Mechanically, they're just really simple, really solid, you know, uh, the blade, I think these are unique uh, to Blade Show this year in that they have a little bit of the milling lines mm -hmm. on the bevel. Usually, I think he polishes those out. It, it throws my fingers off a little bit, but this almost feels hollow grind, but it looks like it's flat to me. Yeah, hard to say when it's just CNC passes. It kind of could be one or the other. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not necessarily using a, a wheel or a flat plate or a belt or something. And the thing with this too is like there are reasons for it. It's it's going to slow down your efficiency just a little bit, but as opposed to something with like a high gloss finish, it can release from materials a little bit better. So there there are reasons for it beyond just the looks, if if that's what you're looking for, so to speak. Yeah. As ball bearings, but it feels almost like washers. It doesn't have that typical ball bearing feel to it. It's a little more. Well. It's a little less free flowing, but it's a little more smooth at the same time. Mm -hmm. If that mm -hmm. makes any sense at all. Yeah, something about this to me just says like premium work knife. You know, I could see somebody getting this and beating it for years and just it becoming that go to knife. With 20 CV steel, it's going to hold an edge for a great long time. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with uh, the knives on his table, and I'm really glad that. We picked some up to uh, share them with you guys. And I think we're going to be working with them more in the future too, which is also cool. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. American Blade Works. I'm looking forward to this because I am a fan of Mr. Brad Zinker. I'll hand you that one. Uh, I'll grab this one. We've got a couple of Zinkers now. A uh, traditional flipper and a front flipper here. Again, we don't have the, the final details on pricing and uh, blade steel at this exact moment, but we're both pretty familiar with Brad Zinker's mm -hmm, work. Mm -hmm. um, so, Thomas, so clean. Zoom in, zoom in, that part right there. That blade shape really, really uh, grabbed me. The blade shape is grabbing and it's a magna cut zinker too. Yeah. This one doesn't have a blade steel marking, so I'm not sure if that one's magna cut or not, but they did mention to me, to me that they got, our buyers, they got a couple magna cut zinkers and it got me excited. Cool to see uh, Magna Cut reaching more and more makers. I love this piece of desert ironwood on this one too. That's this is such a good piece. Yeah, the green on that's awesome. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that squiggle right Look there. That that's squiggle. what I'm talking about. You got the jeweled titanium liners in there. Mm -hmm. A new. I almost don't even want to call it jimping. It's more like a knurling almost. Yeah. I I was pointing out before we started rolling how. Well, it grabs a thumb. Like I can feel my skin kind of getting grabbed just from the little touch right there. And then when you actually go to flip, you have total confidence that mm -hmm. you're not going to slip off of it. I, it's crowned and then textured somehow, almost checkered. I, yeah, I've never seen uh, jimping done quite like this, but I love it. It's very nice. It feels awesome. Lightweight, ultra light even. I mean, there's a reason why some stuff in like Boker's lineup, the Urban Trapper from Zinker is still going strong all the years, years later is because they do a really good job of getting close to the uh, the action and the feel of the customs. And there's just such great designs on top of it, too. Yeah. 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 But man, these are these are very impressive. We could spend many more minutes on these, mm -hmm. but this video is probably getting long at this point. Yeah. So. Oh, deep hollow grind on that. Oh, I spent a little more time. It's a <laughs> stone wash finish. It's very good. It's very good. <laughs> I like Classic this a lot. Classic pocket knife perfection. Mm, mm. We can leave it at that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, speaking of perfection, mm. 
This is a custom from R.J. Martin. Uh, R.J. Martin doesn't hold anything back. This thing is crazy. Um, in addition to being so lightweight, it almost feels like it's about <laughs> to spring out of my hand. <laughs> uh, I think this is fat carbon, front scale, really aggressively machined, complex pattern, kind of a, a uh, co almost a Coke bottle thing going yeah, you've on you've actually here. got contouring, not just rounded over, you've got an actual shape from the spine to look at, mm -hmm. and then the uh, the milling texture in throughout as well. Same treatment applied same, to the... Same, tech, or same shape on the back. Mm -hmm. oh, Titanium cool. lock side, and then I believe that's a zirconium pocket clip. Wow. Just for the heck of it. I mean, even I don't get to hold one of these very often. Mm -hmm. Pardon me while I have a moment. <laughs> Oh. I lean back for the action because I know that these things crack that open. The crack is the word. I mean, listen to it. We'll do it again. Let me just. Oh. Ba -ba. A distinct two yeah. click sound. I think there's a click that comes from breaking the detent and then another one as the lock actually engages. So you get that. Here, yeah. Slow down. It's like doing slow motion. Yeah. Too. Magna cut blade here as well with a kind of a high stone washed finish. It's like almost. It's not like a mirror polish, but it's high polished. I least. almost wonder if he polished it and then stone washed it or something. Something. because Very there's, reflective. There's definitely a hint of that texture still there, but mm -hmm. it is, like I said, you're not, you're not going to like comb your hair in the, in the reflection on it. It's not that reflective, but it's definitely quite reflective. What does comb your hair mean? Use it as a mirror. <laughs> I don't have to, and, and you <laughs> never do anyway, so... <laughs> As we can tell, <laughs> so we'll, we'll just leave that uh, <laughs> as an aside, I guess. <laughs> Looks like the backspacer is that fat carbon as well. So, like, here, here's the thing with like RJ stuff: it's very hard to get a hold of, and we're lucky that we got one piece from the show. Um, yeah. and, you know, we we got one, and we're we're so happy that we got the one. That's that's just a, a beautiful piece. I gotta give it a flip real quick. One more. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's a great way to end that. <laughs> Such a cool piece. Got a couple more on the table. This is a uh, Model 36 from Jason Clark. Whoa. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> Nothing held back on this one. Uh, we've got Vegas Forge Seismic Damascus, fossilized handles, Damascus bolster, and pocket clip. And then just looking even a little closer. Extra little spacers going on. Yeah, a triple spacer liner thing going on here. And a floating back spacer. It, yeah. Kind of just showing off, I think. I'm always a big fan, just in general, my personal style, of like the bone type of coloration to the handle with red, mm -hmm. um, which looks cool. But then the blue backing that up of that anodized titanium liner there is very cool too. And that's just like the smallest detail of what <laughs> makes this knife cool. I mean, that bolster is phenomenal. Uh -huh. Dovetailed here as well. Yeah. Man. When I say showing off too, I want to be clear. I'm not talking about like a, a showiness. I mean, even though this is a bit of a loud knife He's with that Flexing time skills in a way. Yes. Yeah. Really demonstrating and, and pushing his own um, capabilities, I think. Really, you know, Getting the thing, things like that floating backspacer to be perfectly symmetrical and, and uh, parallel to every other part really is a challenge, especially when you're hand crafting these mm -hmm. things. The flipping action is interesting. It's very light. Like it's not a... But well, confident. You, I mean, that popped right open. It's, it's like the opposite character to the R.J. Martin we just nah. looked at, which has that like mm -hmm. barbaric thwack. You, you gotta know? like load up. And this is more like pinkies out almost. Uh -huh. That's cool. A more elegant action for a refined... A more civilized time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm hypnotizing myself. Yeah, don't do that. We still have one more knife to get through. <laughs> the last knife <laughs> from Kritzman Customs. This is the Enigma. Uh, perhaps before it's, I say anything else... It's actually else, a perfect name for it. Because I do know how to open this oh, knife already. Okay. Nick, Nick, our buyer, already did this to me. Well, he didn't show me. He had, Thomas, do you want to? Well, he, Seth showed me. Oh. <laughs> so the first time I was handed this knife, 
it's it's a little tricky on how to open it, you know, because there's no like it's actually held in place here. There's no thumb stud. It's a liner lock. So you're like, okay, what works with that? You know, are you thinking is it like a bolster release, kind of like mm -hmm. the uh, the Switch Army knife there? So I was working on that, and then I felt that right mm. there, the bolster on the back is the flipper. Wow, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those things where you you, you got to see it a couple times to even figure out what happened. Uh, for the lock, it's just a regular liner lock, so the, the close is very uh, uh, typical. But yeah, this liner, or bolster, rotates, there we go, mm -hmm. and springs back. Yeah, crazy. It's an enigma. <laughs> really fun. Nitro V blade steel on this. So we were looking at this handle material, and in the box he calls it Marquita, Bone Marquita, which I did a quick Google search. I'm not quite sure what that is still, even after Googling. Mm -hmm. But it, it looks for all the world like a like a bone linen Micarta to me. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, yeah, if anybody knows what Marquita is, please let us know. <laughs> That's the cool thing about doing these videos is like I'm always learning new stuff, like. The day anyone isn't learning new stuff, you should just like quit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm always happy, like as I learn more stuff, I'm able to bring more insight and more information to our audience too at the same time. So it's, I, I love learning new stuff about knives. It's so cool. Absolutely. So this we got does... a new opening thing and a potentially a new handle material right here to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm gonna need that rag. Yeah. I'm getting the fingerprint uh... Getting triggered by well, these fingerprints. Needless to say, there's a lot of cool stuff. And this is just a sampling of the Blade Show stuff <clears throat> that we did bring back. There'll be more hitting the site over the next several days, maybe even the next week. Um, this stuff, if you're interested in it, it's it may go quickly. You know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, having to like camp out on a page, hitting the refresh button so often. Yeah. That's part of that's, that's part of what some of these are about, unfortunately. Yeah, and it was a bit um, of the same experience at Blade Show um, for a lot of folks. Um, you know, signing up for lotteries, still still a bit of the chance element that yeah. you'd even get the uh, chance to buy one of these. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's at least one way where makers are able to give everyone a fair shot. So it's not just the people there that are able to run to the table first. Well, the people who like have to work on a Friday that can't make it to the show, yeah, still get a shot at some knives. So, speaking of personal time at the show, uh, did you bring one of the knives you picked up just for a quick show and tell? I do not. Okay, <laughs> we'll gloss over it. <laughs> we'll gl gloss right over it. I didn't buy a lot. I bought two knives. I got a. I bought a, uh, a custom Nesmuk for my good friend Alan Searles, uh, and I bought a custom bread knife from my good friend Kyle Daly. That thing is sweet. Um, Cool thing about both of those makers is we also picked up some stuff from Alan uh, to go on the site soon. That stuff's being added, and we don't have it yet. But Kyle Daly is making us some uh, some cool pocket Magna Cut knives. Ooh, nice. That should be rolling in uh, probably a couple months out at this point. But uh, some really cool stuff. What about you? What did you pick up? Uh, well, I have been looking for one of these for a very long time. A little bigger than my uh, Blade Show pickup from last year. You remember that miniature? <laughs> this is a Victorinox Alox Rambler. Discontinued, but... And the... a different color, too, than, than your, just your standard yeah. silver. Yeah. The finest keychain knife I think Victorinox has ever made. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Yeah, we got the scissors the kind of combo tool with the bottle opener and the it's, Phillips. It's basically a classic with the addition of the uh, that, that combination tool yeah. right there. A lot of capability in the little guy. This is the cool thing about knives is like we can geek out about that, which I'm, which I'm sure is a couple thousand dollar RJ Martin custom, almost just as much as the little keychain Swiss Army knife. Yeah, yeah. I really have been looking for those for a long time, so I was ecstatic <laughs> when I saw it on the table. Bought it from one of the uh, the vintage dealers. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I lost my voice, so you. Yeah, <laughs> I was supposed to. I was supposed to take over here, David. <laughs> um, I think I know this spiel. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> he doesn't. Keep checking out the site for this stuff. We'll leave link links in the description, at least to the brand pages where we can uh, in the description. Remember, we've got our knife rewards program as well. So especially when you're per picking up one of these quite pricey knives, you're going to get some free money to back. Free money to back. To money spend on your next to one. To spend on your next one. See, I, that was helpful, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm David C. Anderson. I'm Seth V. That's Thomas behind the camera. See you next time. Bye.